Okay, so far we've gotten away without having to consider uh, non-standard conditions. So um, we've done that because everything we've computed so far is the E cell or the delta E between two half reactions under standard temperature and pressure conditions. So that's 25 C and one atmosphere of pressure. And what we've done thus far is just taken the literally the difference between the two half reactions and their E naught value their standard reduction potentials. That gives us our E cell, and that E cell can relate to either K or delta G through equations we're familiar with. That's where we're at now, but just like free energy um, and delta H and delta S, we, you know, we always have systems where um, we can compute things under ideal situations where um, the equilibrium value K is computed, um, but then we have systems of, of non-ideality where um, concentrations of things, and I should say the concentrations of any species here, are uh, under standard conditions are all one molar. That's really high concentrations, as it's not realistic. And so, there are many circumstances we are not under ideal scenario uh, or under ideal conditions, and we need a system by which we can count for that. That's where the Nernst equation comes in. And you all know the Nernst equation; you've used it. So for uh, a reaction in the form, the green one that I have here, which is A plus some n number of electrons proceeds to the new species B, uh, with the lowercase uh, coefficients being the, the balance co coefficients here, the Nernst equation is, um, it, it just establishes what the true voltage or cell potential would be um, under non-ideal uh, or non-standard conditions. So we, we have our normal E0 cell, which is what we've considered all along, which is computed just as the difference between the, the standard reduction potentials. But then we have this component here, which we factor in uh, any deviations from ideality. So if we're not at 25 degrees, uh, then we can factor in the temperature here. Uh, and then if we're not at one molar, then uh, we can factor in uh, and, and by not one molar, also uh, if we're at non-standard pressures, because that would manifest as a partial pressure here in the equilibrium, um, then we factor that into the equilibrium expression uh, portion of the equation. And notice that I'm using A here for activity because technically the Nernst equation is defined as, as activities, as you might expect from chapter 8. We're not going to do that, but I'm giving you the explicit definition here of, of what's going on. And so the um, concentrations then of these species when they're both one or when the activities are both one which would be standard so set both to one molar what happens to the equation well log of one collapses and E cell is equal to E naught cell which makes sense right that's standard conditions and so that's the important uh, difference here when we're uh, compensating for non-ideality Okay, so let's put the Nernst equation to work in a system or in a cell that doesn't have everything assumed to be one molar. So um, what we have is the cell that we had similarly. We've, so we've talked about this before, you're familiar with it, um, but we never um, had specific concentrations uh, listed. So now I just threw up uh, real concentrations. So in the left cell, uh, we've got 0.01 molar CAD nitrate, and in the right cell, we have 0.5 molar silver nitrate. And I want to answer two questions. One, let's write the full cell reaction, which we've already done, but we'll do it again. And then what direction is the cell spontaneous, which requires us to compute uh, E cell, uh, not E not cell. So we need to, we'll, we'll figure out E not cell in this first step when we have the full reaction, and then we'll figure out E cell from the Nernst equation. All right, so the two half reactions we have here are silver being reduced and cadmium being oxidized, just like we had before. Um, it wouldn't matter, actually, w either way you write this, uh, as long as you're writing one as a standard reduction and one as an oxidation, um, that's just going to flip your E cell. And it's you know, all, all it's going to do is it's still going to tell us ultimately which direction is spontaneous, because one direction will be and one direction won't be. So it doesn't really matter if you know naturally what direction it's going to occur. I'm just writing this up because this is what we had before. I have our standard reduction potentials, which come from a table. Um, and so we can, so remember, I, I have the cadmium one is my minus 0 0.40. That comes straight from the table as a reduction, but we have it written as an oxidation. So what I need to do is um, either subtract that or um, 
multiply by minus 1 as I flip it around and then add down. Uh, so either way, that'll give us the two silver pluses plus the CAD 0 makes CAD 2 plus plus the two silver 0. And that gives us this, um, let's write it up as our E naught cell at um, positive 1.2 volts. And so what that tells us is that at under standard conditions, so standard temperature per hesher and one molar of everything, the reaction is spontaneous in the direction as it's written. But we know that we have um, not one molar conditions. We have a half a molar in one, and we have 0.01 molar in the other. So that requires us to pull out our trusty uh, nurse equation. So that's going to be E cell equal to E naught cell. And then what I like to do, well, let me uh, finish writing this up, uh, E naught cell um, minus RT uh, NF natural log uh, and then we'll just treat this in concentration. So this would be concentration of, um, I guess I should tell you what I prefer to do. So you can write up, um, you can write up nurse equations for each one of these um, half cells if you'd like, and then add them together. I prefer not to. I think it's way easier if we write up the full cell. And so I always deal with the full cell. So I'm going to write up a, a nurse equation that is relevant to this entire cell. You'll see in a lot of textbooks though they write up uh, half cells as nurse equations and then and then uh, sum them after. That to me is really confusing because then you always have to flip one. It gets it gets confusing. So just write it up like this. Um, this becomes concentration of cadmium, um, but we don't include silver because it's in the zero valence state. It's a solid, so it's a pure substance. The same would be true for cadmium. So that would be cadmium uh, two plus over silver plus, but we got to take that two into account and square that. And so that would be our full expression. You also see that um, if you are conducting your um, measurement at 25 or close to 25, then you can truncate uh, this part of the expression a little bit. So what I'll do is rewrite this in a form uh, that I prefer to use if I'm doing experiments that are close to 25, then I don't have to use this every time. So E cell is equal to standard E cell minus, and then it becomes 0.05916 over N. Um, and that natural log uh, turns into a log base 10. Uh, and that becomes then CAD 2 plus over silver plus squared. So I prefer to use this form of the equation just because most of the systems that I'm dealing with are at or near 25C. Uh, in which case I don't have to punch in all of these things and deal with the funky units um, that these constants give me. Totally up to you. If you are, if you do have a cell that's at uh, a temperature that's not near 25C, then this first expression would be the one you want to go with and need to go with. If you're near or at 25C or you can assume you're at 25C and that you just have uh, solution species that are not at one molar, then the second equation is a nice, quick, handy one to use. You'll have both uh, you'll have access to both. Okay, so this is the setup for our expression. Remember, if um, if these things were at one molar, then this whole equation would collapse such that E cell is equal to E naught cell. Um, that's not the case. So we're going to pop in um, 0 0.01 uh, for this, and we're going to pop in 0 0.5 uh, for this, but this bottom one gets squared, and then we'll solve this uh, in this case, the N here is the number of electrons, so this is 2. Everything else we know, the E cell is the 1.2, so let's write this out. Okay, solve this. Be careful here uh, in terms of order of operations, because you've got you've got exponents and logs and additions and subtractions, and so it's easy to, to get mixed up here, so be a little bit careful when you're doing that. Um, that gives me a value of positive 1.24-ish volts. Um, so in terms of the questions, we were asked to write the full cell reaction, which we did right off the bat. What direction is spontaneous? The direction as written is spontaneous. If we would have written these two half reactions uh, in reverse, so flip them around from each other, and we would have had a flipped around uh, full cell reaction, would have been totally fine. What we would have computed would have been minus 1.24 volts, which would have been totally fine. 
uh, our answer then still would be true that the direction is spontaneous in the the direction here would have been you know it would have been flipped in the other case so it doesn't matter just to to maybe dispel any phobia you have for having to get these reactions written up in the correct form to begin with. It doesn't matter. Just write them up. Just write up two half reactions, their relative E naughts, compute their E cell naught, and then compute their overall E cell, and you'll know what direction it's spontaneous and then what direction it's not spontaneous, and you'll know the relative voltages of each of those directions. Last point I want to mention while we have the nurse equation written up here is what does it look like when the cell is at equilibrium? And so really think about that for a second. If you've got this cell here and you're measuring the potential as a voltage, you get a multimeter connected, right? You connect it all, you just let it start running. So current's flowing through there. How do you know what's happening to the voltage over time? Well, hopefully you come to this conclusion that the voltage is not going to just stay its voltage forever because after some period of time, that voltage is going to start to approach zero. Um, because the solution concentrations of both of these things are going to change, right? In this case, you are um, going to be destroying silver ions, and in this case, you're going to be creating more cadmium ions. In that case, uh, this, this concentration is going up, this concentration is going down, uh, and what's going to happen eventually is that this term, this second term, as it approaches equilibrium, once it reaches equilibrium, this whole term is going to equal 1.2. And so you're going to have 1.2 minus 1.2, and the E cell for this will be zero. So the cell voltage is zero when the two half cells are at complete equilibrium, right? Because equilibrium literally means that there's no driving force for the reaction to run in one direction net versus the other direction net. We do know that it's occurring at the microscale, the molecular level, but macroscopically it's not occurring. Just like if you learned in a Chem 108 class, a system is at equilibrium when the delta G is equal to zero. It's the same thing. When delta E is equal to zero, we're at equilibrium. Not when the standard reduction potential or the standard Gibbs free energy are zero, but when the actual real system is at uh, at zero. That's when we know the system is at equilibrium. Which is why your batteries go to zero, right? Uh, batteries aren't going to maintain their voltage forever because what they're doing is striving to reach equilibrium. So at some point, uh, those half reactions are continuing to one system is being reduced, the lithium, uh, and the, uh, the other species, the carbon in this case, uh, is being oxidized until the concentrations of those relative species satisfy the Nernst equation or this half of the Nernst equation such that they cancel out whatever their standard cell potential and the cell potential goes to zero. That's why if you were to measure the voltage of a dead battery, you get zero volts.